This is the Financially Simple Podcast, a show dedicated to destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. And now, here's your host, pizza-loving, certified financial planner, Justin Goodbread. Welcome to Financially Simple. This is a finance show for small business owners about money, how it works in our business and our personal lives, and how we can build wealth to be financially independent. I'm your host, Justin Goodbread, and today is episode number 13. Now remember, we're in a series on how to build a business to sell it. Today's episode is titled, Listen to Your Good Angel, Don't Do It. (laughs) <laughs> like, what, Justin? Yeah, seriously. So here's the deal. Have you ever seen the commercials? You have an individual who's faced with a decision, maybe the decision of peril, maybe a decision, good decision, bad decision, and suddenly on one shoulder, a good angel, usually in white and has wings and a halo appears, and on the opposite shoulder, a devil appears, you know, with horns and a pitchfork. Both the good angel and the bad angel plead their case, and ultimately the person chooses a side. I've seen some commercials, like cookie commercials or like whipped cream commercials, where they pick the bad angel side, right? And we all laugh about it. And we've seen commercials which may be a heart tug or heartfelt commercial, which the individual picks the good angel side. Why are we going with this? Well, this is exactly what happened to me, yours truly. So many times on my podcast, I use example of people that I've worked with in some capacity, friends, sometimes clients, sometimes myself to drive a point home. Now, I always change the names and the details. Obviously, I don't want to harm anybody. I want to protect the innocent. But I want to talk about me and the single biggest mistake I ever made in business. And why I entitled this episode, Listen to the Good Angel, Don't Do It. So I want to get the story for you. Many years ago, I had the opportunity to purchase a business. It appeared by all realms to be a very, very good opportunity. And like any prudent business person, I began conducting due diligence, if you will. I looked at everything. I mean, I interviewed the employees. I interviewed some of the customers. I looked at financials. I looked at bank statements, contracts, business operating agreements. I mean, you know it. But I didn't stop there. I even had counsel. I hired an attorney. I hired CPAs. Long story short, after I purchased this business, what seemed like at the beginning minor discrepancies ended up being major, major, major problems. And the problems caused lots of harm, lots of grief, and lots of heartache. I can remember sitting when I was doing the analysis of this business, sitting there and saying, should I buy this business? What are my pros? What are my cons? And the pros constantly began to allure. Like many people, I began to be allured by making more money for me and my family. And I began to turn a little deaf ear to the white angel, so to speak. The white angel was telling me things like, do you really need to do this? Does your family really need to have this much more stress in your life? You know, I had a lot of cautions, but I gave way to the little devil, so to speak, in my analogy. And said, you know what? I can always make more money. I'm young. Let's make more money. And long story short, because of greed, I made the decision. And that decision cost me seven years of my business life. Not very long after I made the decision to purchase this business, I found myself entrenched in a legal battle to try to justify the situation. And some seven years later, I had spent $300,000 in legal fees to try to justify the situation. That's a tuition that I will never forget. I have earned a doctorate degree from the School of Hard Knocks in the topic of today's episode, and the topic is risk management. Boy, holy Batman is like to say, what an education I got during that seven years. Now, it was expensive. I mean, I could have gone to Harvard or Yale for that amount of money that I ended up paying out of my pocket, mind you. No insurance to cover this one, but... I learned a lot. I had a wise person once tell me someone else's experience is far better than trying to get the experience on your own. You know what? I wish I would have listened to the fact of risk management plays big role in our business lives. Had I listened to that advice that the wise person gave me, I might have been able to capture the seven years of my life and not had to spend that god awful amount of money on legal fees. And that to me is the single biggest mistake I've ever made in my business career. And it boils down to risk management. So when I say don't do it, you better make sure you have some risk covered. So 
we have to start off with what is risk. We've heard the name. My family and I like to play the board game Risk. You know, it's about trying to conquer the world. It's a fun game. It's kind of like a strategic game. It's a lot of strategy. So I Googled risk and the interweb tells me very simply, risk is the potential for harm. <laughs> it's that easy. The truth be told is that we face risk every day. I mean, we face risk when we get out of the bed. <laughs> I was laughing. I'm kind of limping today. I was laughing because I sneezed at like six o'clock in the morning on Monday. And whenever I sneezed, I pulled my hamstring like something fierce. Oh, and it's been hurting me all week. That's <laughs> a risk of sneezing, right? Whenever I leave the farm every day, I get in the car, go through the gate, go down the long gravel road, say goodbye to the deer and the turkeys, leave the woods and come to the big city of Knoxville, Tennessee. And in that drive, I'm placing myself in all sorts of risk. I'm may be a risk of being distracted and I have a risk of driving too fast when I get distracted or I may end up in an accident. Just this last week, I was driving on our long, windy road and I hit a piece of black ice and our car went crazy and I thought for sure I was going about 60 foot down and banked me right into the Tennessee River. That could have been a risk of death, you know. Truth be told is we all face risk of some sort. And many times we are the calculated risk. <laughs> I mean, if you're jumping out of an airplane that's a risk, but you're probably doing it with a parachute. Unless you're like that one guy I saw on YouTube that jumped out of the airplane without a parachute and landed in a net. And that guy was pretty impressive. Anyways, we all face risk. In our businesses, we face risk. All sorts of risk. I have a dear client who's in the construction business. He earned a very large contract, which would take years to complete. I mean, major contract. And one risk that he faced, which actually came to hurt him, was the drastic increase in price of supplies. Now, there's ways that you can mitigate that risk, but in this case, he overlooked it. And he made a bid and got the contract. And now, some two years later, due to macroeconomics, the price of PVC, the piping that he would have to use in this particular facility, drastically climbed. And it cost him an enormous amount of his profits. And that's just a type of risk have another client who works in the coal industry. And in the last 10 years, there was a major war on coal. I'm not getting to the politics of that, but nonetheless, there was a major war on coal. And because of the political pressures in the coal industry, my client's business took a huge downturn. And that's called a political risk. So we all face risk in business. Some of us face it at different shapes and sizes. It could be weather. My brother's in the pool business. You may know that. If it rains, he has a hard time. I have friends. I have clients who are mass farmers, and they produce large crops. Fire could be a major risk for a farmer. Freezing rain or hail could be a major risk for a farmer. I remember here in Tennessee, some years back, we had a major hailstorm that just damaged all sorts of houses. The hail was so large, it went through the siding of the houses. Well, that was a risk that the people who had insurance insured against, but there was one insurance company that was overly exposed in our area, and they had more houses insured than they should have, and it caused them to have a risk within their company. So we all face risk, every one of us in our business. So in our business, we deal with these risks, but more often than not, we deal with things like law. We must comply with OSHA. There are signs and placards throughout various types of businesses. We have to deal with the Patriot Act. If you're in the financial world, you know that one. We all have to deal with Equal Opportunity Act, the Labor Standard Act. This last year, the financial world dealt with the Department of Labor ruling. We all have to deal with these laws, and they create risk, right? So what are we to do? What are we to do with this risk? And why does it matter in the realm of trying to prepare our business for selling? Well, let's first deal with the first question. What do we need to do with risk? We must first identify the risk and comply with the laws which govern the risk. Let me say that a different way. We must know what our risks are, and we have to look at the laws which govern those risks and abide by them. It's that easy. You know, my mistake, my biggest mistake ever, the mistake I made was not looking at all the potential risk involved, and mine had to deal with legal risk. I missed it. I missed it. Clear as can be. My advisors didn't tell me about it, and my little red devil got involved. So we all have to deal with risk. You know, most entrepreneurs will see the upside like I did. I saw the money, man. I could see the dollar bills flashing in front of my eyes. Most of us see the upside, but very rarely do we see the full potential or the devastation of the downside. So we must be aware of all the various types of risk that we have, and we must comply with the laws which are governing those risks. So we got our hands full 
it's a tough job we have. So that leads to the question of, well, how do we identify the risk? How do we look at it? You know, here's what I do, and here's what I advise many clients to do. If you're a business owner, you're preparing your business for sale, or maybe you're not preparing your business for sale at this point, but you have it somewhere in your mind, one of the first things you can do is sit down at least once a year and look at the risk which are currently facing your company. Now, the reason why I say once a year is because over time, risk change. So, for example, you may have risk of employment issues. You may have risk of outside competition. You may have political issues. You may have geopolitical issues. You may have interest rate risk. You may have legal risk, accounting risk. There could be so many different types of risk. So where do you start? I'm going to tell you that I would recommend you speak with your outside counsel, your outside advisors. And I'm going to throw you a curveball on this one. Usually I say talk to your planner your attorney, and your CPA, I'm going to tell you to start with a good insurance consultant. A good insurance agent is the first place you can start. You're probably meeting with this person or this individual once a year anyways as you're reviewing your insurances. The reason why I say start the risk query or where you're trying to research out what risk you're dealing with with the insurance agent is because the insurance agent has a good finger, a pulse, if you will, on what the trends are and what the dangers are. I remember a couple of years ago, My insurance agent said, Justin, are you insured for cybersecurity? At the time, that was a new word to me. It was just you started hearing some hubbub about it. I was like, man, I don't know. That's your job. So he was looking out for me in my business to try to protect me from some pending risk. You may also talk to your certified public accountant, your CPA. They're going to look at potential revenue risk, debt risk tax, equity risk. You know, we covered a lot of those things that you can glean from in our last episode, episode number 12, where we talked about financial documents like your profit and loss statements, your balance sheet. Your CPA is going to be able to help you with some of that and look at your risk. A lawyer, a good lawyer is going to be able to help you identify employment risk or legal risk, entity risk. You know, we had some major tax reform happen over Christmas time. And now you should be talking with your attorney to see if there's any compliance risk or do you need to make some entity changes? Do you need to move from that LLC to an S-Corp or from an S-Corp to a C-Corp or a C-Corp to a... Who knows what you need to do? And that's where a good lawyer can help you there. A certified financial planner can help you identify your long-term risk as it relates to accomplishing your specific goals. So by making the decision you're going to make today, how is it going to affect you in five years and 10 years of your life, according to the goals that you've outlined, the whole reason why we've even started this business to begin with? How is the decision going to affect you there? Forecasting risk. A CFP can help you with that. A CFP can help you with business consulting risk if they're business consultants like myself. You are listening to Financially Simple, destroying the complexities of money for today's small business owner. Don't just go to the outside advisors. You also want to talk with your inside counsel. What I mean by that, if you're a small business owner, rally the troops. Do a SWOT analysis. A SWOT analysis, we'll talk about those in later episodes. You've heard of them, though. They stand for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. You know, Get your team together. Look at what strengths and weaknesses you have in your business, and that's going to identify some risk. Look at your opportunities and the threats, and those are very good indicators of what risk you have. You know, last episode, episode 12, we also talked about KPIs or key performance indicators. Your management team can help you identify what those KPIs are telling you and how you can identify the risk that your business is facing. So those very, very important during that time frame. You know, after you've identified the risk, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to weigh the probability of that risk happening. So you're going to look at what is your greatest risk. You're always going to look at your greatest risk first. And you're going to rank your risk in order from that greatest risk to the weakest risk. You know, if you have some major threat that you're going to have to be dealing with here very, very, very soon, that's the first one. The old adage on the farm was grab the low-hanging fruit, if you will. You know, that's what you're after there in point number two. The third thing you're going to do is now that you've identified your risk and you've ranked them on orders of risk from greatest to weakest, now you're going to predict the harm. Just because you have a great risk doesn't mean it's worth dealing with. It may not be harmful enough to devote time, energy, and resources to. However, if you do have risks that are above your threat level or above your comfort zone for the harm it could do to your business, now's where you're going to start predicting that and figuring out how we're going to deal with it. So, for example, will the risk create layoffs? Let's say you have a major competitor that comes in place and they're going to take some of your market share. Are you going to have to lay off some of your long-term employees? 
maybe you've created a product that has some liabilities. How about this is a risk? We dealt with this with one of our clients this year. They made too much money. <laughs> You're like, Justin, that'd be a good thing. No, it wasn't. They made so much money so fast that they couldn't keep up with the growth that they ended up losing their business they had to begin with. And so they saw this huge spike in revenue in their business and didn't have the operation structures in place and candidly wouldn't listen to the advice that their team was providing them. And because of that, now fast forward 12 months and now they're out of business. The growth of the company, that's a risk. So once you're able to predict the harm, fourth, you're going to address the risk. Again, at that company who should have seen this major influx off the demand of their product, they should have had that foresight ahead of time with their team and prepared themselves to handle the influx of revenue. Go back to me and my biggest mistake ever, right? Had I taken my own advice I'm giving you here and had I walked through and identified the risk, put probabilities on it, I could have now said, you know what, I don't want to make this purchase. And now some seven years of my life would be back and some $300,000 in legal fee would not have been wasted. But we can't stop there, guys. We can't because we're doing this yearly. So once I go through my risk assessment this year and as I'm monitoring it this year, next year is going to change. And we're going to have different risks. We're going to have different opportunities. We're going to have different threats. And so we have to constantly deal with it every year. So when I was in the middle of my legal battle, I heard my attorney consistently say, ignorance is not an excuse to not obey the law. I heard him say it every time he was in a deposition. I heard him say it when other people called him on the phone. He said that statement consistently, not only to me, but to everybody he talked to. He even said it to the other counsel sometimes. Ignorance is not an excuse. Once we've identified the risk, now we've got to understand the laws which govern that. So we must know the law. When you're like, Justin, I'm not a lawyer. Hey, look, guys, I'm not either. I deal with a lot of lawyers, and they are some of the sharpest strategists I've ever seen. They know the law, and then, especially if they're specialists, like an estate planning attorney or someone who deals with litigation only. Man, the litigators, they are like, I'd love to play them a game of chess. But then you also have people that deal with like patent law. I have a great patent law attorney. Man, I don't know anything about legal. I don't know anything about employment law. I don't think anything about estate law. All I know is patent and he knows it well. So in our world, we have to know law and lawyers can help us there. My legal battle cost me $300,000 in legal fees. And because of my ignorance and my experience that I personally have, I place legal compliance as probably the greatest hidden risk for many companies. And I said hidden risk because my ignorance, and I don't feel like I'm a dumb guy. I did not know certain things about the accounting law in the state of Tennessee. And I learned it very quickly. And because of that, it cost me dearly. So to me, legal risks are probably one of the hidden risks that small business has. Today, because of my experience, I constantly explore the legal advice. I have lawyers that I hire. I hire compliance firms to help me stay compliance with the laws that I must abide by. I'm constantly monitoring the operations of my companies to make sure that we're trying to the best of our ability to stay compliant. Maybe you're not legal risk. Maybe like Justin, I get you on legal thing. Maybe your risk is something else. Maybe it's competition. Maybe it's political. I mean, to go back to my coal mining client off the top of my head, I mean, we knew, and again, this isn't a slam for President Obama. I think he did some good things that I agree with. I think he did some things I don't agree with. And I think every one of us were honest say that about politics. But whenever President Obama became elected, I can remember my client saying, man, the coal industry is going to get hit really hard because President Obama's policies were going to try to move the country from fossil fuel to renewable energy. And he attempted. My client recognized that as a big risk, but he didn't do anything to protect himself and he wouldn't listen. So maybe yours is not legal. Maybe it's not political. Maybe it's environmental. Maybe it's geopolitical or global political issues. Whatever your risk is, whatever the risk is, you have to identify it, number one, and you have to stay vigilant. You have to fight this thing and make sure you're aware of the potential harm that it can affect in yours. You know, in your world of risk management, it may not be just seven years of your life and 300,000 legal fees. You're like, just that's pretty harsh. Yeah, I get it. I live through it. You know, God's faithful. He provides for our needs, but it may cost you your family. I know people who lost their families. Kids don't talk to parents. I mean, how heartbreaking would that be for me if I couldn't go home and talk to my children? They don't talk to their family. They lose their friends. Out of ignorance, they go to jail because they mess up. They go bankrupt. 
or worse, I had friends that I know of today that committed suicide in the financial world. 2008, you watch people jump out of buildings. Financial people jump out of buildings. They was committed suicide. All because they didn't see risk. So friends, risk management is vital. And how does that apply to our second question? We know it's vital, but how does it apply for us in our journey to sell our business? It's not rocket science. Any potential buyer is going to look closely at our risk management process. They're going to see if we understand the risk of our business, and they're going to see if we prepared to handle the effects or if we're challenging those risks. The buyer is going to want to look at our track record. They're going to want to see historical risk scenarios and see if we've been preparing and constantly battling the risk. Put yourself in a buyer's perspective. The last thing the buyer wants to do is come in and buy a business that the x-ray machine, so to speak, is not fully seeing through. I bought a business when I was 19 years old, and it was a small landscape business, and I bought it out. And whenever I did, about six weeks later, I found out the previous guy had missed one payment, unemployment payment to the state of Georgia. It wasn't a big deal. It was like 60 bucks. Okay. But I missed it. It wasn't a big deal. I just paid as like, okay, well, no big deal. But imagine if you're the buyer now, you haven't paid your unemployment insurances or you haven't paid your taxes, your back taxes, or there's other some risk. And we're talking hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. You can certainly understand the potential buyer's angst, if you will, whenever they're looking at your business. So risk management is vital. As we're journeying down this path to sell our business, I'm going to ask you the question. Have you sat down consciously and purposefully looked to identify the risk that your business faces? Put yourself in the buyer's perspective. What risk would the buyer have? And if you have done that, have you documented it? Have you documented how you're going to fight that risk? Maybe it's just as simple as getting insurance. Who knows? Every one of our businesses are different. My point in this episode is simply to show you that risk management is vital. And I'm opening myself up and let you look at my life. Have I had the perfect business career? Heck no. <laughs> it's been fun. Don't get me wrong. I have learned so much. Because of my legal battle, I'm now an expert witness for many different cases. And I can walk into the courtroom and I understand the process. Man, I was deposed for two days straight. I think it was like 16 hours under deposition. I got deposed this week as an expert witness in a case. It didn't even bother me. I knew how to handle it. So I got a good education, and I understand that we are the sum total of our experiences in life. I get that. But I go back to that statement. Somebody else's experience is a far better teacher than your own. Friends, now's the time to take a risk management assessment of your business. Prepare yourself. So that's it for this episode. Episode 13 is in the books for Financially Simple. This is Justin Goodbrand. And hey, look, let's not forget, life is hard. Business is fun. Risk management, ugh. Who wants to get up in the morning and think about that? Let's just continue to make our lives at least financially simple. Hey, y'all make it a great day. You have been listening to the Financially Simple Podcast. The information in this show is for informational purposes only. This show is not investment advice. Instead, seek help from a competent financial advisor. Justin Goodbread, CFP, is an investment advisor representative of Heritage Investors, a registered investment advisor.